G'day, Faithful, and welcome to episode 30 of the Beyond the Sidelines podcast. I know it's a pretty big number. We're pretty surprised, and no doubt you are as well. Why they haven't taken us off the air, I don't know. But anyway, this week we sat down with former Reds, Force, and Wallabies speed star Luke Morahan, who's now playing with the Bristol Bears over in the Gallagher Premiership in England. And he uh, came down under a few weeks ago to have a crack with the Australian Sevens team as he tries to work towards that Olympic Sevens dream. We also spoke about Manchester City, which I find hilarious as a Liverpool fan. Uh, The Brisbane Lions women's side going 2-0. The NFL possibly having 14 teams in the playoffs as of next year instead of 12. Uh, The Australian women's team, the Cricket World Cup starts this weekend. And are they going to win it? We don't know. Well, we had some opinions, so maybe you of yours will let us know. And Australian Super Rugby sides still yet to beat a foreign opposition this season. Three rounds in. What's going on? We're looking at you, the Queensland Reds. Anyway, let's get it. And joining me this week is the full contingent, as I like to say. Everyone's kind of jumping on that at the moment, but it's my term. It's my thing. And it's uh, a good thing, mate. It, well, I haven't introduced you sorry. yet, please. So, oh, sorry, I'll interrupt you. Uh, sorry, my bad. Wait your turn. Angus, I'll introduce you first. Yeah, I'm being patient, so I'll just wait. How you you still didn't get into Hey, hey, into hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. Angus, how are you going? Yeah, I'm good, mate. How are you? I'm pretty good. Have you got up to much this week? or? Oh, you know, just the usual. Just uh, hanging out. All right, out. that's enough from you. CJ, how are you, mate? Does it matter? No, no, it doesn't. Anyway, we're going to move on pretty quickly because mm, I don't really swiftly. care. I just want to get into the sport, get into the good stuff, mm. CJ. So we'll start off as we do every week with the fast five. That's five topics, one minute each. Pretty simple. Never stick to it. No dramas. Let's move <laughs> on. Anyway. No complaints yet. Basically, no. Oh, yet. Yet. Anyway, uh, topic number one is Manchester City. Now, mm. the powerhouse of English football have been fined 30 million euros it was bound to happen for, at some point. Yeah. For failing to meet financial fair play yeah, regulations. They've, they've also been banned for two years of European competition. Think, mate, that's the big one, isn't it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because some of these players, they are going to leave. You know, mm-hmm. Sergio Aguero, I mm. see him going back to Athlet- Atletico. Well, that's what I see. Kevin yeah. De Bruyne, okay. I see him going to Barca. Yeah. I think it's those older players too. Well, they yeah. go, do I want to spend the last three years of my career not playing well, European exactly. football? They, no. They can't even play Europa League. No, no. You know, and there's talks about, you know, League Two and whatnot. That's mm-hmm. not going to happen. No, no But uh, what is even more, I guess, pressing for City is the fact that some of their players, their big names, could walk away on yeah. a free. Yeah. And yeah. that's what's been talked about during the week because I think it was something about failing to, like, meet their contract UA obligations. Uh, financial fair play. No, as in, not? like, within the club. So okay, the yeah. players feel let down by not... You know, City not not living up to their contract, I guess. So yeah. their players might walk on a free, which would be absolutely that'd be even worse. Horrific for well, the I mean, club, Gusman. I mean, Pep Guardiola has said he's staying, mm. which um, that's a sign of confidence. Yeah, I, I don't think don't, he will. Yeah, I'm not confident with that at all. I think he might try and get his job back at Bayern, even or maybe Barcelona. Nah. I think he's mm. kind of done that though, hasn't he? He's won it yeah. over there. So where hasn't he won it? A League. A League. <laughs> Brisbane Raw. Brisbane Raw. Get Actually, him in. Actually, uh, what? Melbourne Victory have a vacancy. They do. Historically, yeah. a good club. Mm, get him in. Yeah. Anyway, moving on to topic number two. Melbourne City, same owners. Moving on to topic number two. <laughs> Sorry, my please. bad. But that is a good point. Yeah. So Thank congratulations. You. Thank you. Anyway, topic number two. Brisbane Lions in the AFLW. Mm. Now 2-0, and a comeback victory against the Geelong Cats down there. In the cold of Victoria. Woo woo. CJ, what did you think of this win, mate? Because the starters, Huge. congratulations to the uh, four girls who earned their 25th game caps. That's M. Bates, Emma Zilke, friend of the podcast, of yep. course, Kate Lutkins, and Ali Anderson. Exactly. Now, 25 games, guys, might not seem like a lot mm. going off most sports, but keep in mind the sport's only been around for three mm. seasons and they don't play as many games as I think they would like. Exactly. And this is their fourth season. I think they only have eight to nine rounds a season. So it does take a while. So most of these girls have been pretty much their foundation the They're yeah. foundation players, all these players. And, you know, I mean, if you haven't listened to it already, go listen to last week's podcast go where on. we uh, interviewed Emma Zilke. She's a legend um, captain of the Brisbane Lions. But, no, this is huge. And the win itself, they're now 2-0 and at GMHBA. They were down. Quite significantly yeah. um, at half time, I believe, and came back to win emphatically. Showed a, showed a think bit of grit. The Cats only scored like one, like a behind in the second half. But the question, CJ. Shut out defense. Question, CJ. Mm. Contender or pretender? 
I think you've got to say they're a contender. They are. Well, you know? they beat the defending champs last week and the Crows, Adelaide. Mm-hmm. They followed so, up with a pretty convincing win, I oh, have okay. to say. It wasn't convincing. Not a convincing it, first half, again, but the second half is I think the word, definitely premiership form. The word form. you used, Gusman, gritty. You know, mm. that's what it was. It was brave. It was courageous, resilient. Mm. Um, that's what it takes to be a championship winning side. So mm-hmm. hopefully it's a sign of more to Keep come. it going. Yeah. Uncaged. Uncaged. Unleash the lion. Let's go. Anyway, topic number three, the NFL. There are reports coming out of Gridiron in America mm. that apparently the final system is going to experience a bit of a shake up. Mm. I don't know when. Is it for next season? Uh, I think that's what they're predicting. I think yeah. it is. So basically at the moment, six teams normally go to the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Now they want seven. So instead mm. of 12 teams, it'll each, be six. Each division. Each division, that is, yeah. of course. So 14 teams across the two. And only the top team will mm-hmm. get a first round buy. So there is more of an incentive, I guess, to, you know, to claim top. that top spot. But, mm. Gusman, what are your thoughts on this overall? Well, I guess they're now based in it a lot more off-season form. So the, people are more playing for that 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 top finish, aren't they? Um, but well, They have honest, to. That's, that's yeah, what they're playing yeah, for anyway. Yeah, mate. I know. Uh, but it, it sort of incentivizes... Incentivize, uh, what's the word? Incentivizes... There we it, go. Third time's a charm. Got it. A little bit more. Um, yes! <laughs> Speaking. Although adding, he read the dictionary last although, night. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Shut up. Although adding another uh, team into the mix, I don't know. I, I don't just, know about. I it. think it's nearly half the div- half of the competition goes to the playoffs. Mate, it's so like what? It's like this is like A League kind of stuff. I was going to say maybe the A League's you know started the trend. They're trendsetters. Everyone gets a go. Exactly. It's a mm. similar thing in the NRL, Gusman. That's coming up. I think is it this year. What's this? Remember, it's something oh. like the ninth and tenth team is supposed to no. earn a wild card game. That was announced last year. No, that was. I'm pretty sure that was just chat, mate. It's oh. um. It. I don't think they'll be doing doing radical changes like that. Um. But yeah, you're right. I mean, half the half the NFL now can play playoffs. It sort of. Defeats I don't know. De- degrades it a little bit because you can have a you can have a rubbish season like the BBL. Um, you can have a rubbish, uh, rubbish season and still make the playoffs. And it just exactly, yeah. I like the purpose. I yeah. like the fact that it's only the first team who yeah. gets a week off, though, because as uh, I think you tried to say, Gusman, the first team, you know, that position becomes that much more holy, yeah. than mm. what it is now. Because back, well, last year and the years gone by, it's just been about I get the week off, but I also get home finals. Yeah, if I make yeah. it all the way through. Now in the wild card, sneak through. It's mega, but mm. again, do I like the fact that all teams are basically getting a go? Mm. Not really. We're you could gonna, have a losing season and probably still make it. That's the thing. We're going to see some seven and nine teams. Well, I mean, you we look, will. It's you happened even, before, so it'll happen. I mean, again. you looked at Philadelphia this year. I mean, they had what was it? They had a losing season, didn't they? They still made it. Uh, they did. You'll have a lot yeah. more sides like that though making the making the playoffs now when they probably don't deserve it. If anyway, you had a losing season, you should not be in the playoffs. No. Definitely food for thought, but I guess we're waiting for that to be confirmed because mm-hmm. that is just the report at the moment. But I guess mixed reviews, let's yeah. put it that mm-hmm. way. Number four, the Australian T20 Women's World Cup starts this weekend. Campbell can't wait, of course. Kane is Bane, mate. And uh, the question that has to be asked, I guess, guys, is are the Australian women's cricket team the best Australian sports team full stop? They're up there. They're definitely up there. They, well, I, I, they're strong favourites to win this competition. I mm. mean, on home soil, the the T Twenty World Cup, um, we've seen stars like Elise Perry. We, these are household names now, aren't they? Mm. Elise Perry, Alyssa, uh, Alyssa Healy, Healy uh, Meg Lanning. They're just an absolutely star-studded lineup. Mm. And look, like the men, they they've definitely uh, proved their point, especially when the men were having a little bit of a problem. A bit, um, the bit women, of sandpaper. Yeah, Maybe. yeah. The 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 uh, rough, bit rough. The women <laughs> have been a solid side for a number of years, um, and look, I th- I think they'll go on to win the the World Cup. Oh. Bold prediction right here, but I think most people are thinking it. And I Russia, Russia. or Smokey. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's funny. I'm the best Australian sporting team generally. I think so, mate. I How think... are we in the lawn bowls? Ah, formidable. Formidable. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thought so. Thought so. Deadly. What about uh, How about uh, pool? You good in pool? Uh, not so much at pool, good at snooker. How about darts? Great at darts. Great at darts. No, I don't know. Don't know. Don't quote me on <laughs> don't that. Don't be unreliable. <laughs> you know, obviously we're backing, I guess, the girls to go all the way, but silver ferns? The white no, ferns, no sorry? Chance, no. It's Mitch just... Santner getting, getting a bowl out there. He got dropped from the test team. I know he did. Week. Anyway, that's <laughs> He's available uh, for selection. Yeah. <laughs> get him in. Jeez, please. He God, wouldn't get no. in that side either. I don't think he would. Anyway, can't turn a doorknob, that man. He can't. He can't. Anyway, topic number five. The last one that I wanted to talk about a fair bit is uh, the Australian Super Rugby teams. Still yet to win against foreign opposition three rounds into the season. Now, mm. CJ, 
You were watching the Reds last week. I don't know what I mean, mate. Against the Jaguares over there, Jaguares. over there in Buenos Aires, Argentina. Yeah. And it was all going their way until... How good's the uh, Argentinian ref, am uh, I right? I just had to... Oh, so you're blaming the ref, okay. Yeah. I was trying to prompt... That's a, that's a classic response, isn't until it? Until the... No, I was, trying to prompt, Choking. I was trying to prompt you to go until the red, the yellow card. But anyway. Yeah, well, pretty proceed, much. Proceed, proceed. Yeah, no problem, mate. Uh, well, We're supposed to have this chemistry. This I know. dynamic, and you're just not picking up Sorry, and pal. throwing out. Sorry, pal. Anyway. Uh, no, yeah. Yellow card with 10 minutes left. Liam right, the skipper. I didn't see. Did you guys watch it? I think I sent it no. to you. The video you sent was really grainy. It was really grainy, but also... There Filmed was, it himself. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Get yep. it out there. <laughs> Went down to Buenos Aires for the weekend, boys. Quick, quick weekend trip. Exactly, yeah. exactly. But no, the game was, it was pretty good. Like, they were ahead by, I think, a try, basically, with 10 minutes left. Should be closing it out then. Um, they were looking a bit shaky, but, you know, again, Liam Wright getting a yellow card was not a yellow card, in my opinion. I didn't see where it was. Didn't see the explanation. Um Sent off with, well, Sinbin, for Sinbin. In, with 10 minutes left. So it's basically just being sent off. Um, and then they ended up scoring like four tries in the last 10 minutes. Well, yeah. what, what is damning is it was 24-12 at halftime mm-hmm. in favor of the Queenslanders. Exactly. Second half. Guess the second half score. 22-2. Uh, Gusman? Three. Actually. 20, uh, 24-5. Wrong, wrong. It was 31-3 Jeez. in favour of the Haguaras. And I guess a yellow card aids that. Yeah. It helps that. But it was only in the 10th minute. But uh, even with, still. With 70th minute. Yeah, you're still being outplayed. And more than that, the Highlanders getting a 84th minute try close to the sticks against the Brumbies in Canberra. Mm. The Brumbies have a bit of a hoodoo against the Highlanders at the moment. And uh, man, it's that was the game where an mm-hmm. Australian team was supposed to get up. Because the Highlanders, they got demolished. I think it was the Sharks down yep. there in Dunedin the week before. Not very good, or didn't look very good, and this is Australia's best team. Mm. Yeah. It's um, well, it's damning. It is young. I guess most teams at the moment are experimental. Yeah. You know, especially the Reds. The Reds we're, certainly we're, are, We've yeah. talked about it for ages. Even the um, the Brumbies, they are playing a few youngsters. But mm. Rajan Pasatoa, congratulations exactly. on getting your first game, pal. First cap, that's pretty cool. Um, but again, the old boy. Again, they... Australian rugby needs to be held accountable almost. Mm. They need to expect better. What I liked about that Passatower, I sent it to you guys, that Passatower um, debut, rugby new, or GPS Rugby News posted something about it. First comment I see is, Broncos or Storm should sign him with all that talent. League. League. Like league. We are the best game in the world. Yeah. yeah, okay. You know what will happen is he probably will get signed by the Broncos or, the, you now that's or the Storm, and I will be laughing because... I guarantee it'll happen. Oh, he's I guarantee a, he's, it'll he's a good happen. player, and the leaguey brains out there will be going, okay, I'm keeping tabs on this bloke. Leaguey so, brain. And so, he, he'll be taking the money over playing for the Brumbies oh, and losing to the Highlanders. Oh, Canberra's a good place to play, mate. Over oh, yeah. Over oh, travel- I love playing in Canberra. Over yeah. travelling the world. Yeah, exactly. Take the cash. Anyway, where we- would you rather play, Penrith or Buenos Aires? Don't ask stupid questions, Campbell. Anyway, obviously Penrith. Penrith obviously. every day of the week. Anyway, uh, we'll talk plenty of league and plenty of rugby. Even I guess reignite this chat possibly later in the show. But for now, let's uh, tune into our interview with Luke Morahan, which was a few weeks ago. It was leading up to the Sydney Sevens mm-hmm. a few weeks back. He um he's playing for the Bristol Bears at the moment, but he was granted a trial week. Yeah, I think it's fair to fair to say with the Australian Sevens team trying to reignite and push for that Olympic dream to come mm. true. So Former Queensland Red Speedster. Speedster, mm. CJ. Anyway, you can listen to what the Speedster had to say right now. So joining us on the phone now is former Reds Force and Wallaby Speedster Luke Morahan. Luke, thanks for joining us, mate, and congratulations on getting the nod for the Sydney Sevens. How does it feel to be back in a gold jumper? Yeah, thanks, guys. Uh, look, yeah, it, it's exciting. I've, um, you know, we've been working towards this for a little while now, so it's good that we finally got it. Got it all happening and, uh, yeah, get the uh, boots on tomorrow to get out there and run around with the boys. And it's been a big week for you, a trial week from what we've read. How was that? No, it's been good, yeah. It, you know, it's sort of a – I haven't been playing sevens for a while, so Tim Walsh has sort of said, look, come back for a, uh, a week of training and possibly a game this weekend and, and to see how you go and see if you can fit back into the, uh, the sevens outfit and, and see if the lungs hold up. And so, you know, so far they have, which is it's been a good week. So obviously you've come back during your two-week break from the premiership where you play with Bristol. What was kind of the arrangement or what was said between you and Tim Walsh in terms of coming back and uh, giving Sevens another go? 
so we probably started discussing it, um, I'd say, six months ago um, with the idea of trying to play a few tournaments to, to see if I'm, you know, you can get around the sevens again and, and, and sort of push the Olympics. Um, obviously, with our with our season in, in the UK, it's pretty full on with the number of competitions we would play. So we just isolated certain weeks that would be possible to come back. And, and this two-week period was perfect for us to, you know, with the break in the premiership up there and, and some opportunities at Sydney Sevens. So it took a while to sort of um, to sort of negotiate and get get right, but uh, you know, it's been a good little week and hopefully get a few minutes tomorrow and, and see how it go. Well, you were sort of a late inclusion to the side. Um, how has the lead up to the Sydney Sevens been? Uh, it's been good. Yeah, I mean, I only came in on Monday, um, but I'd, I'd spoken to the, the couple of boys and team I'd played with previously, and, and obviously Tim Walsh, the coach leading into it. So we kind of had an idea of what was going on and I could come in and hit the ground running. And it's been a good week. They've sort of had a bit of a down week. So for me, that's been great because I can, it means I can sort of learn a few things and it's not too um, high pressure just to be able to come back in and run around and, and to see how uh, it all, it's all going. And, and for me, it's, um, it's been a good week. Yeah, let's talk more about you, mate. This Olympics run, playing at the Olympics, is that something you've always wanted to accomplish? Yeah, look, I saw the, I saw the guys that um, that did it last time, and I, I knew I feeling pretty well, and they said they had a great time, and you know, it's a pretty once in a lifetime opportunity for a lot of people. So, for me, you know, the opportunity came up. Tim contacted me, you know, as I said about six months ago, and when you get an opportunity to do something like that, you, you don't let it go. So, for me, um, as of about six months ago, when it became a realistic option that you know the door was open, I, I sort of put my focus into it and, and thought, you know, what, let's give it a crack and and see how I go. You know, it's, it's a long way to go, but this is, this sort of week is a, the first step to seeing if I can you know, come back and be involved. Yeah, and you're no stranger to Sevens, playing in the World Cup Sevens a few years back and the Sevens World Cup, uh, even winning a silver at the Delhi Games. Uh, is there something about Sevens that you love or is there a reason you want to keep coming back to it? Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I do, I do enjoy just the, uh, the the foundation of the game. It's a, you know, it, it's a pretty brutal an honest, um, you know, environment where it, it exposes you if you're not right in a few areas of the game. So I just like the the uh, authenticity of it. I suppose it's the it's just the basics of rugby. You know, the, the breakdown, the, the tackle, the you know, the beating person one on one. It's um, it's something probably you know I'm sort of pretty well versed. I've just enjoyed it, and you know, why not why not go back to it when you can and. Um, I've been fortunate to be able to come back some, to some pretty good tournaments and, and be involved in, in um, you know, sevens over a period that I've seen it grow. So I thought, yeah, I enjoy, I enjoy it, so why not keep, keep at it? Well, are there many differences in your personal game? Um, uh, for example, uh, how you prepare between playing 15s uh, in comparison to sevens? Um, oh, physically, obviously, you prepare a bit differently because of the, um, the fitness level and all that needed and, and the ability to back up, you know, two or three games in a day. Um, and you're usually playing in pretty pretty hot locations around the world. So there's a bit of a, a physical difference, but um, emotionally it's all, it's all the same. You've got to get up for, you know, a certain period of time and, and beat your best. So that's really um, hasn't changed much in the way I prepare for a game in 15s or in 7s. It's all, it's all just a, a, mental, um, a mental game at the end of the day. You've just got to get up for it and, and back, back yourself that you've done the training and, and you're good to go. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, you mentioned they're playing in different parts of the world. Obviously, you do play for Bristol. Um, with this whole, you know, sevens arrangement, what have Bristol, I guess, said or given you any kind of feedback on going over to come back down, uh, down under? Um, and I guess for this two-week break, what have they said in terms of you playing more footy in that time? Yeah, look, look it's... I'm not going to lie, they were a bit reluctant at first. You know, um, we're, we're in a pretty thick part of the premiership at the moment. We've just finished, I've just finished 15 games straight and we're not even halfway through yet. So, um, you know, there's a lot more rugby to be played and that, that could be, you know, quite nerve wracking for, for a team to let a player go and, and you know, risk the, the possibility of injuries and things like that. So they were apprehensive at the start, but um, we had a good chat and they saw that it was a, a goal of mine that, that um, you know, I want to be within the the Olympics fold, and they're pretty good with that. You know, they they within the group they're trying to and push people to aspire to greater things and um, you know international level rugby. So 
this is the same sort of thing for, as, as you know international 15s in, in their in their mind. So um, they were pretty good at the end of it. They really sat down and just had to think about it after a good chat with myself and the head coach Pat Lamb. And just said, you know what, yeah, we'll back you here, and we trust that you'll you'll stay fit and come back to us um, ready to go. But if you get the nod to join this Olympic squad, how much could you commit to the Bristol Bears versus you know your commitment to the Australian Sevens? Because the season up there in the Premiership that doesn't end till you know mid to late June. So can you really get in that many yeah, yeah, you know, no. series tournaments? Well, no, that, that's the that's the, the tough thing is there's only a couple more options, and you know um, again there's a few overlaps. So. This tournament was really the one we could just come down and see if it was worthwhile chasing. If it wasn't, you know, I, I was no good at sevens anymore and um, it wasn't to work out, then, then, then so be it and we just move on. But um, if we come down and, and it all goes well this week and, you know, they, they're, they're still keen, then we'll look at possibly another tournament here or there. But if not, there's a, um, it's, it's really just a, a nine nine or ten week training camp post the premiership season and, um, and hopefully I'll get fit enough there and, and put in the work. And I think I will. I think that'll be fine. You know, nine weeks leading in, um, I think, is enough. But uh, it's just up to the seven guys and two miles to see, to think that, you know, that I can do that and that they want me to do that. So um, there's still a bit of bit of um, uh, work to be done on all that. But this is a good start anyway. Well, I mean, you join that Bristol Bears side in the 2017-18 season and help them gain promotion. What was that season like as a whole for you? Yeah, it was a good season. I think it was probably perfect for me as an introduction to um, Northern Hemisphere rugby. It's a pretty brutal competition in terms of um, we were the ones on you know that everyone wanted to beat that year because obviously we were not sure we were not sure about saying we're going to go back up and you know when you say that in a competition every team's out to beat you and. We'd signed some pretty uh, high-profile players like Stephen Lewatua, so um, we were the ones to beat. And, and every week was like a, a grand final for the for the opposition that we were playing. So uh, we had to be on our toes and be ready to go. And there's some pretty pretty grim places you've got to go there, and and some fields that aren't the best, and all that sort of stuff. So it was it was a tough encounter that that year, but it was a good it was a good stepping block into Northern Hemisphere rugby and then what it was it going to be all about? And um, I really enjoyed it. We you know it, it allowed us to gel well as a group. Um, being in that situation, a few of us all come over to to try and get the team back up, and you know, it puts a bit of pressure on you. But uh, one that we we obviously um, enjoyed because we you know did really well that season and came straight back up. And the next season, I think it showed because we we stayed up and did well again in the competition. And uh, promotion relegation, it's a foreign concept down under. But having experienced that, do you think it's a format that has merit and a format that maybe we should adopt down under? Yeah, I mean, there's discussion in the Premiership at the moment about ring, ring fencing and, and saying, you know, the same teams keep going up and down and, and every team that goes down comes straight back up. So there's that discussion that they should ring fence it for a couple of years. I, I don't think they should. I think I, I really enjoy the concept. I think it um, creates, uh, creates a, a competition for everyone. I think there's, um, for the fans, it's great because there's always something to play for. There's no dead brothers. I think it's super rugby. At times, once you sort of lost three or four games at the start of the season, people start writing you off and say that's your season done. Whereas, you know, in the UK, there's always something to play for. Um, you know, whether it be relegation battles or, or, or top of the tables. Yeah, for sure. And you know, I mean, we're talking about promotion relegation there. There's a sort of, um, sorry, you there. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I dropped out for a second there. Thought you started uh, stop yeah. speaking. Sorry, continue. No. Oh, yeah, sorry. So um, I think it just, it just creates a, a, um, an entertaining competition for, for fans and players alike because there's always something to play for. Yeah. I, I think it's a, a great concept. It can't be, it can't be done everywhere. Um, you probably, I don't know if you'd, you'd have the depth in Super Rugby to be able to do it. Um, maybe you could do it you know, with a, a, a tier two competition throughout Asia or something. But uh, yeah, I think it's definitely... definitely um, one of the perks of playing in the Premiership. Yeah, it certainly is. And there's a certain team in the Premiership that are on, I think, minus 77 or so points at the moment. Uh, a bit of controversy there. Yeah. What do you make of that whole Saracen situation with the salary cap breach there? <coughs> yeah, I, I see, you know, it's, it's forever unfolding. There's always something every week coming out by the sound of it, uh, by the you know, look of it. But I think, you know, they've been caught. They've been... Uh, they've broken the rules and, and they're, they're facing consequences and 
um, you know, it'll be interesting to see the, the, the full effect it has on the competition. You know, I don't think the premiership's ever really seen or experienced something like this. Um, yeah, and, and it, it, people try and compare it to the Melbourne Storm type situation, but it's different because, you know, the NRL doesn't have, have relegation. So, um, what the full effect on, on the Saracens club will be over the years, I don't know. You know, they, they may go down and lose a bit of, a bit of fan base and traction there that they may never recover from. Um, hopefully that's not the case. It's good to have a, uh, a quality team in the competition like they've been over the last few years. So, um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see the, the, the full effect of this all, which I don't think will, will come out for a year or so. So, um, But, you know, the basic consequences, I suppose. Well, how are you finding the, the challenge of playing in the top division of English rugby? I'm really enjoying it. It's a, I'd, I'd say it's probably one of the best competitions in the world at the moment. Um, talking to a few other guys, you know, you're coming up against internationals in every position and uh, most teams will have internationals coming off the bench so it creates a, uh, a tough game every week a tough game um, you know for the full 80 because you've got these such quality guys coming off benches and, and guys in squads that uh, you know you, 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 you take off another one comes on pretty much so it's a, it's a it would have to be one of the tougher competitions in the world at the moment. I'm really, really enjoying it. It's, um, it's a great challenge and it's uh, uh, one that I'm really enjoying. <clears throat> and that's exactly right, mate. It's a very tough league, but is there a player in particular? Who, well, who is the toughest player you've faced? Uh, well, I'm, I'm coming up against a, uh, a fellow Aussie in, in two weeks' time. It's going to be a difficult task. Ken Kelly Naivaro, he's, um, he's up there at Northampton doing pretty well, so He's always one to, um, you know, one you've got you got your hands full trying to trying to shut down. Um, then you come across guys like the Owen Farrell, um, George Fords, who just run the game really well. And as a as a back three player, you've got to be quite strategic and, and on your toes in in terms of um, you know backfield coverage and and uh, covering their, their kicking game and their game management. So um, yeah, the guys like that are, are, are pretty tough. But I would say that you know most weeks. You've got a you've got a world class winger you're up against, or a, or a, um, you know a good fire half that you're playing. So they're the sort of the ones that I'm, I really look out for every week. And uh, mate, why did you make the decision to leave Australia, leave the Force Wallabies and the Reds to join a team who at the time were in the second division of the English comp? Um, well, I, I did a lot of uh, research and and due diligence into into what the club were aiming to do and, and um, where they'd come from, where they where they were going. And, and I knew a few people who were playing there at the time and they spoke highly of, of where the club wanted to go. They just had a, a new owner and Steve Lansdowne come into the, the organisation and, and, you know, um, put some, you know, put some cash into the, into the environment and said, I want to go back up and I want to be fighting for trophies. And um, that's what you need over there. You need, you need a strong ownership and with a vision and a goal and uh, when I saw that it, it, it made it a lot easier because talking to a lot of guys who had played in, in the championship said it's still a good competition and, and you guys will be straight back up so um, it'll probably be better for you with your body and things like that going from straight from Super Rugby into a championship season as opposed to a premiership season so there's a few things that I, I um, considered and at the end of the day I, I liked the vision of where the club wanted to go and so far so good it's all coming off well, I mean, you did used to play for uh, the Reds back in Australia. What was it like being around that squad um, around the 2011 sort of season when, uh, of course, they were on top of Super Rugby? Yeah, it was, um, you know, you look back now and, and you sort of say that uh, it was a pretty special time. And at the time, we knew it was. But, you know, when you, when you, whenever you're successful, um, you always, you always realise that uh, it's never going to last, but looking back now, you really realise how special it was. And I think it was because, you know, obviously the on-field success was great, but we were playing with guys who we grew up playing with. You know, we were all in around the same age group at school, um, playing representative grade rugby together. And we just all developed and came through to, you know, um, that point in 2011 where we won it. So we did it with, with good mates, which is, which is another special factor of it all. We did it with guys who were, we played under 16s with under, you know, schoolboys under 20s, all that sort of stuff. So um, that just sort of made it a little bit more special as well to do it with your good mates. And uh, you moved from there to the Western Force. You spent a few seasons there, but I think it was two seasons after after you left or the season afterwards. 
they were axed from Super Rugby. How much of a loss do you think that was for Australian rugby to see them removed? Yeah, I think uh, I, I, I left for well, my last season there. It was their last season in Super Rugby. Um, so I, I think it was 100% the wrong decision. Um, I think based on the criteria in which they decided to, to ax a team, I don't think we fit that criteria as opposed to some other teams. Um, I think you can still see now that the love for rugby is in WA. There's a lot of good junior guys coming through in the under-20s ranks, um, performing well. There's um, still good crowds going to the rapid rugby games and, um, you know, probably healthy crowd numbers and they're going at Super Rugby at times. So I definitely think it's a, it's a missed market that we've pulled out of as Australian rugby. But hopefully, um, you know, they stick in there, they keep growing the game over there and they're back you know, in the competition at some point if, if that's what they want to do. Yeah, let's certainly hope so. I mean, they won the uh, NRC this year and, you know, could you potentially see them coming back or would you like to see them back? Um, yeah, look, I, I'd like to see them in the in the highest quality rugby competition they could be in, wherever that may be, and wherever they choose to be. They've obviously got a you know a, a lot to, a lot of um, opportunity to, to do what they want with Twiggy Forest there backing them, um, keeping them alive, and, and some strong uh, fan bases. And as you said, you know they're, they're winning NRC still. So I think they've they're probably won the most NRC titles out of any any team in the competition to date. So. You know, there's still a healthy um, rugby environment there, and I think they're the world's oyster in that sense. They, they can they can sort of do what they want if they keep building and keep growing the game over there. Yeah, definitely, man. Well, uh, that's all from us. We'll let you uh, get back to the sevens camp. But thanks for joining us this week, and best of luck back at Bristol, and hope to see you in Tokyo. No worries. Thanks for the call, guys. And thanks again to Luke Morahan for that interview, boys. It's a bit weird, I think, that Bristol decided, hey, you know, you're one of our. Star players, or well, not star players, you're one of our squad. Yeah. And we're going to let you go trial down under for a week to possibly make a team that when you get selected, you would miss the hypothetical finals of the premiership over in the UK. Yeah, CJ, a, or well, Gusman. It's a very brave move, isn't it, by the club? I don't I think mean, it's brave. No, I don't, I don't think, think it's brave. brave. What do you mean? They're, they're letting this guy, they're, they, they're losing depth. Um, because they're letting him go to this competition. It is very brave. I don't think it's brave. I, I think it's I, stupid. If, if I was a... Cl- well, yeah, it's stupid as well, but it's... A, <laughs> Look, it, it's, it's the director of rugby, Pat Lamb. Of course, he's a big name back in New Zealand, but he's decided, hey, you know, Olympics comes once every four years. Ultimately, it is the pinnacle of world sport. Yeah. Not necessarily rugby yet. Yeah, I think but, it's a great opportunity for... Moran, let's not well, get I, this yeah, wrong. I, th- I think they're, they're showing him a great deal of respect as well, letting him oh, go. They are. See, I, I think that's a good thing. Mm. I think that's a cool thing. But I think it could almost come back to bite them in the foot mm. or whatever. You know yeah, what I mean? I've like, never heard that phrase. Bite them in the foot, is that one? No, it's bite them shoot, in the uh, rear end. Shoot them in the, shoot them in the foot? Shoot, shoot them in the, foot. in the foot. That's the yeah. one. Mm-hmm. Anyway, moving on. Mix, mixing quick. them up a little bit. Yeah, a little so bit. Mix and match. I like to do my own thing. It's an analogy, isn't it? Mixing and matching the analogies. I don't think uh, that's what it's called, isn't it? I don't yeah. think so. It's like putting uh, a hat on a hat. That's yeah. another analogy. Well, I've never heard that. That's like that's like wearing a hat, but also like having facial hair. It's like putting a hat on a hat. What? Okay, that have, that is definitely a saying. I've you never Google heard that. This before. It is a saying. I'm gonna Google it now. Someone's okay. stall. That is stall stall. That is bizarre. I haven't heard that either. Yeah. But you do you. Anyway, it's a new one. it is worth mentioning that the uh, Sevens World, I guess, it's taken a bit of a hit recently. So, um. The Hong Kong Sevens has since been delayed, and so has the Singapore Sevens because of the coronavirus, which of course is mm-hmm. affecting the world on a large scale at the moment. So, hoping that everyone's okay. But, they're not. But they're not. <laughs> they're not. They're not. But uh, basically, what I think is bizarre about this is Hong Kong Sevens, mm. obviously the premier Sevens competition, bar none. It was the original. It was the OG, Gusman. It was the original. <laughs> the OG of exactly. Sevens competitions. Basically, it's the big one. And they went from there were no plans to de- to de- delay this competition, to we're going to have to delay this competition in the space of two weeks. Mm. I guess it highlights the extent of how bad the coronavirus is at the moment. And again, just hoping that everyone's okay. It mm-hmm. is. I mean, it's just rugby. Yeah, you know, push it back. There's bigger fine. things. Yeah, big, big, it's really not worth it. It's not, Gusman. It's not. Anyway, if we're going to move on to something that I think you consider to be worth it. Let's jump into the NRL nines just quickly, which was held in Perth yeah. last weekend. The Cowboys getting up. None of our teams know. got up. No, no. yeah. The, the, the Roosters made lost. Made some money, but. So. Well, the Roosters lose like 35-0 or 34-0 in the first game. 
So yeah, I was kind of like, Ugh. they lost 35 nil. Then the game after, Warriors, the Warriors lost 34 nil. <laughs> yeah, I put money on the chooks he, for that. So too. He, he tagged me in the Roosters post card, haha, scoreboard. And then an hour later, he tagged me in the Warriors one saying, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I was <laughs> like, yeah. Man, I wasn't exactly. surprised. Sounds about right. I think I've got to thank the Warriors in a way for getting my expectations, you know, low. Yeah. Well, yeah no. Heading into the season. Because exactly. normally what they do is they win their first three. Yeah. And I'm like, hey, CJ, we, we could be th- on this here. This is our year. We could be okay. Mm-hmm. But this year they've just gone, hey, most teams are fielding C grade teams, if that. We'll field our B team and still get thumped. Thank you, Warriors. I bow to you, courteous sirs. Anyway, yeah. you mentioned it before, Siege. Uh, mm. You won a bit of money, but Did I guess win a bit of money. you also lost a bit of money or lost a bit of, bit of money that you maybe should have won, maybe? Just a bit, maybe? Just, just a bit, maybe. And of course, I think this was the case with a lot of people. Yeah. yeah. So, well, I mean, the Cowboys did end up winning the competition. They had an outstanding uh, side with some real standouts. Uh, Jason Tamalolo, of course, looking as fit as ever. I'm so tough away for now. But if we were going to get on to what we were alluding to. Wait, wait. wait. We'll come back to that, guys. <laughs> oh, you jumped, you jumped <laughs> the gun, you a, jumped bit. The gun a little bit there. Yeah, his, you did. In his defense, CJ, yep. you weren't there. You were working. Yeah. One of those days where you went MIA once again. Yeah, thought um, you were dead again. We basically spent the day sitting in front of the couch yeah. and gambling responsibly. Responsibly. Which you okay. should do, of course. Mm-hmm. And um, basically, there was the controversy. Number one, mm-hmm. the St. George Flyer. I forgot his name. Uh, Cody Ramsey. Bingo, there you go. Mm-hmm. Long-haired, yeah. He looks like he's from the 70s. He's got a mustache, too. Exactly. It's good. He can move, that boy. Oh, he can move. He was very good. Speedy. He was very good. Probably one, one of the standouts in the tournament. One of the players of the tournament, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, but he scored a try that wasn't Gus. Mm. Now, I'm not sure if you've seen it, but basically, yeah. it would work if the end goal was, like, wider than the field. Let's yeah, put it that, that way. That, that, that's a that, good way to that put would it. Help. Yeah. That would help, because basically, I think that's what the referees seemingly thought. I don't think, yeah. the I don't think he was. even put it on the no, dead ball line. He I didn't. think he put it past the line, um, which made it even worse when viewing it on replay. Like, granted, but it was you quick. Th- in real time, it was quick. It was a it was a kick over the top. And last play of the game. Air, last play of the game. He put it down. And honestly, when you're watching, did you boys feel yes, when you were watching, we were watching it, it was a try? No. To be fair, we were biased, but honestly, yeah. looking back at it, it's pretty clear. Honestly, looking at it when it was in real time, it's like, he's put it out. Because yeah, yeah. he takes out the, f- um, the post very early. Yeah. Like yeah. you can obviously touch the post with your body and stuff, but I saw he took it out with his hand. I was like, Ooh. it's just it's just another refereeing blunder, isn't it? See, and we've pe- had a yeah. few recently. People are frustrated by this, Gusman. Yeah, but did they have three dollars on it? I don't think so. I don't no. think so. A whole three dollars. But there was another one in the NRLW. It was uh, NRLW nines? It, it was, was the last pool match. Last pool match of it. It was the Sydney yep. Roosters versus Roos. Saint George Dragons, the eventual champions. Exactly. Mm. Um, and it was a, a penalty try. Yeah, at the very Sorry, end. Sorry, I'm stealing your thunder. Please no, you're right. No, 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 no. But it was just it was a penalty try, and then. They went to take the kick. Some oh, no. Sorry, butting in. Yeah. I don't want to do that, but it wasn't a penalty try. No. It, cause until. It, yeah. Because it was weird because she they scored and then, or they didn't score, I can't remember. She pick, picked up the ball, lined it up, missed it. It was right in front, so it was an absolute shocking it, it miss. It was a shank. It was a complete mm. shank. Misses it. Then the ref goes, penalty try or something like that. Then they make the call after she misses it. See, that's what annoyed me because I said to you off air, would the refs have given that a penalty if she, if took she made before. it? Yeah, exactly. I don't think so. I don't think now, so either. In the referee's defense, somewhat, it was a penalty. Mm, it was. Uh, sliding in, Gusman, you, you've seen these before. Mm. Sliding in, knees into the gut. They are the worst. They, they, are, they are terrible. That does not tickle, CJ. No, it doesn't. But basically, it was a penalty. Late call, though. But the referee, you need can't to be, call it afterwards. Yeah. The referee's got to make the decision... At the top. When it happens. That's a problem, though, with nines. They get a move on, don't they? So it's it's tougher for the referees to make mm. on-the-spot calls, um, and they don't often have the replays to back them up, and they don't they don't have the chance to go. Hold on here, hold on, hold on. We've got to we've got to try. Let, let's go upstairs. We've got to try. Let's just let's yeah. just check five Finn's replays. Put on my glasses here. Let's which check is five kind of replays. Um, they don't really have that option. No. So you can't really blame them for having a few blunders, but these yeah, are but, pretty big. But they're huge. Don't make. Errors. Well, firstly, Cody Ramsey placed the ball outside of the tri yeah. tri zone. And he placed it outside the venue. Exactly. It was like, crazy. It was Put well it in Row Z, basically. Basically. Um, I like mine better. But and he knew it as well. He, he said straight afterwards, he was like, yeah, look, it wasn't a try. Like when they looked up on the screen, they were like, yeah, no, it wasn't a try. He was interviewed immediately after. 
Now, Access, mm. Fox Sports, good on mm. you, getting down there and asking the player the question. But he even said, look, it was out. I knew it was out. But you look, ain't fessing that up, though, no, are you? He said, no, he did, though. He said, no, thing. no, but not in the game. No, well, he was like, you're scoring. Even, even afterwards, oh, I he think was, I got that, boys. No, I, even afterwards, he was like, I don't know. But well, again, of course, you're going to. He, he, I think he obviously knew um, that he'd missed it, and he said that after the game. Well, well on the field, you're going, ah. Uh, yeah, I don't know, boys. I don't know. And then he tried to feign an injury, and then it was all no, like... Was it? No, because remember, nines is instant. That's basically what they're trying to do when it comes to these not using video refs, mm. as you said, off air, Gusman. But basically, it was... He stood up from his miraculous 10 out of 10 dive. Yeah, they check, check with the sideline, and they no, point to the spot. But it was about three seconds. Yeah. So it wasn't like he had the opportunity to go, I've got it. No, got I know. It, I know. It. I'm talking after they awarded the try. Yeah, but he looked a little sheepish, started feigning an injury, was like... Oh. No, he, no, he didn't. No, no he, he even did. said did straight away he, he was like, it was wasn't sharp. a try when he saw it. Because again, this is the access that Fox Sports have, and I think it's the beauty of the nines that ultimately it is a bit of a gimmick, but that these you know broadcasters have the rights to interview players on field immediately after the fact. Mm -hmm. And they asked him straight after, after it was given, before the kick was taken, was it a try? Mm. No. It wasn't, but the, said. but the referees gave it, so I'm not going to question them. Yeah, mm. it's like, that happens in sport. But anyway, the second one, yeah, <gasps> that was completely, you can't just you can't call it after the fact, after she's missed it. You've got to call it when it happens. I'd rather them not call it than, than they and go. And get the decision wrong. Yeah, and get the decision wrong than them going, because it looks worse if she misses the kick and then they go, oh, yeah. shit, it was a, it was a yeah, penalty. Because... Did she just rush the kick? And yeah, maybe, I don't know why she did though. She was like, it was so nonchalant. Yeah, but she was. I think she was one of the forwards. Yeah, so she looked like she hadn't. You know, I, I don't guess, think they were making to... it through either way. No, so, no. no. They, yeah. So I think it was kind of like, hey, I'm just gonna have a go. Fair yeah. enough. But she shanked it, mm. and it sailed well under the bar. A pretty good goal on football. Yeah, but they're not playing football. Gaelic. Top bins. Top bins. Going through. Absolutely exactly. top bins. Literally <laughs> top bins. You know, dude, <laughs> yeah. Not even noise is stopping that. But uh, spe <laughs> <laughs> speaking of football though, Gussie. You take it away with this one. Uh, the captain's challenge, yeah. Um, Gussie, Gussie, no, 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 no. mate, you're jumping Mate, you're jumping again. What, what do you want? We'll come back to league later because we like uh, a bit I know of you there. just love talking a bit of league. But yeah. we want to speak about what's in the news is basically two EPL footballers Oh yeah. had a bit of soreness mid-game. Yeah. And I guess mm. you kind of want to explain the tactic yeah. and exactly what happened. But, you know... Co this, cover your ears, kids. Yeah, this mm. was... Um, kids in the car test. I mean, this was very strange. I mean, we first saw it in the Chelsea United uh, fixture a few days ago when uh, Har uh, Harry Maguire... Um, Big old slap sort of, Yeah, he lashed out with a boot on Mitchy Batchway, the Chelsea striker. It was a reaction. It, mm. it was um, <laughs> very said, suspect. It should have been a red card. Um, every, every, pretty much everyone agrees if they've seen it. He lashed out with a boot... Right in the uh, the groin area, uh, yeah. yeah, he yeah. wound up a little the bit. The nether region. But what if he wasn't the United captain, and if he was say an eighteen-year-old off the bench, mm. and you do that, mm. are you getting sent off? Mm. Like I'm trying to. I don't know. I think no. I think they're saying that because he was out of out of the field of play, it made it a little less. So what? Like, what? Suspect. Yeah, so that's I, that's what people were saying are after the game. So yeah. if someone's playing they, football. They dragged their opponent off the field, clocked them it was UFC more, it, style. It was more... No, of course not. It was more seen as a sort of scuffle that happened off-field. Apparently, he was falling. He was falling. You know how they slope the pitches and yeah. stuff? He was falling, and the leg accidentally stuck out, and it wasn't seen as sort of a malice <laughs> challenge. Yeah. But when you look at the replays... There was he's, malice. He's doing one of these. <laughs> exactly. He's, he's kicked well, for the For the listeners at home, what was one of these? They can't see I, that, um, Gus. Uh, a high kick. Oh, oh yeah. High kick. A big high Karate kick. Karate yeah. kid style. Yeah, it actually hurt me glutes a little bit. Yeah, I need to stretch it um, a little bit more, pal. But yeah, it was definitely a red card offence. And then there was another one in the uh, City West Ham, although this wasn't a boot. A no, little less, a little less painful. Got a little bit handsy. Yeah. Old this, Angelo. A bit, little bit too bit close saucy. for comfort, a little bit, this the one. Italian. Um, uh, Angelo Ogbona for West Ham, uh, their defender, he... Grabbed Sergio Aguero in a very suspect place. Mm, got a handful. The same sort of place that uh, Mitchie <laughs> Batchway um, sort of had, although Mitchie Batchway probably a bigger target area. Um, <laughs> to be to be fair, I think in his defense, Don't, no, 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 no. <laughs> uh, in his, cut that. <laughs> in his defense, there, um, he was trying to just bring Aguero down, almost you know rugby style type thing. Yeah. But you know, still, it was a bit weird. Yeah, it was. Um, 
But that one was also claimed Did he lower to the be shoulder? A, that was also claimed to be a penalty, that one. So it um, was. is this a new sort of uh, tactic for defenders now? We are uh, just, just grabbing them by the uh, well, what's a doodle. I don't think it's a tactic, mm. Gusman, but CJ. Maybe for you, mate. Yeah. <laughs> Don't well, play football anymore. <laughs> he's retired. Hung yeah. up the boots. He's more yeah. handball. He's yeah. like him. <laughs> handball, yeah. I remember when Gussie came up to me. He's like, Finn, I've got something to tell you. I was like, what's that, mate? What's that? He's like, I'm retiring. No. And I got home, shed a tear or two and thought, you know, I sometimes feel that football was made for that man. Look, the comeback mm. The comeback could be on. Oh. You never know. Ooh. That's a hot take. That any is of the M- a scoop. If any of the NPL sides are looking out for a solid right back, they've got one right here. Honestly, <laughs> I think I, I can do a good job at right back. I tell you what, I reckon he'd be a good water boy. Oh, what a man! What a man! What a man! What a man. Yeah. Mm. yeah, no, but we'll see. We'll see. I yeah. Mean, well, another big development in football this week is uh, Arsene Wenger. He's the new. He's part of FIFA's head of global development. He said a big kind of thing about offsides. So we know offsides have been pretty contentious with VAR recently, right? Um, everyone's getting a little bit frustrated about it. Just a bit. Just a little bit. Um, basically, they've, <laughs> they've changed it so. Um, you will not be offside if any part of the body that can score a goal is in line with the last defender, even if other parts of the attacker's body are in front. What so do you guys think about that? that I know it's a bit zero, of a mouthful. That made zero sense. No, so, but I'm literally so, reading the quote. So yeah. basically, you're not offside. If you're in line. If you're in line. So my heel could be in line with Campbell, mm-hmm. and I'm on. Yeah. I kind of like this. It's more that if you're completely over. Then you're offside. That's that's definitely better. You know yeah. the, the old tactic of the offside trap. Mm. You know, how dangerous does that become now? Because it's borderline. Yeah. Mm. You know if you're you know what, walking, treading that fine line already, and someone just has a heel there. Yeah. And they they're off to the races. They're one on one with the keeper. You've got I don't know. Who, I, who's a who's a bad goalkeeper? Uh, I can't think of one off the top. Uh, of my Wojciech head. Chesney. No, he's actually all right. Fabian um, Fabianski is decent as Karius. well. Carius. He's terrible. Adam Bogdan. Carius is probably... Willie Caballero. Yeah. Oi! Carius is probably better. Speaking of Willies. Uh, <laughs> I, lo- I love Willie. I yeah. mean, uh, sorry. Didn't say that. <laughs> Take that off, one out of context. Off record here. I don't love Willie. I love Caballero. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, no. It's, uh, I quite like this. It's a bit of clarification. Yeah. I think because ultimately there's too much contention mm. over what is and isn't offside. Now, the thing that annoys me with VAR, mm. if we kind of take a wider scope for a second, is that there's no sideline like camera. No, it's following. always a bad angle. Exactly. I think they need a camera that's following the ball. Yeah. Or following the last defender. Yeah. Well, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Following the ball would be absolutely hectic. Well, they've also said it, but... um, that VAR will only be used for clear and obvious offside okay. errors. That's just uh, from now on? From now on. Okay. That's so yeah, that makes like... it a lot better. I almost think that... What do you determine as clear and obvious? Refs could still go, oh, look, I'm going to use it just in case. I don't want to... Yeah, exactly. You know, well, the way, that's, that means nothing. Well, the way yeah. they do it now, they get like a grid out, don't they? The yeah. grid and they yeah. draw a line down at stuff you would have done in architecture. That's not, that's not clear and obvious if you're needing to get a grid out. Mm. No, it's not. So basically, you know, we've seen instances this season where, you know, the armpit rule and... You know, half my foot is offside, so I'm offside. <laughs> yeah. Type thing. Well, look, yeah, they're, they're scrapping that. Gus, I, yeah, scrapping I don't that. mind. That. I, I actually, sorry, I don't like that when you've got like a hair over or your fingers over the yeah. or a little bit. I think of your it should toe. just be feet. I yeah, I, I'm exactly. I think if your feet uh, are over, uh, you, you got to have your feet behind. Sorry, you got to have the feet behind the last. Well, defender. now in line, li- in line well, with, see, or is, in line with. Yeah. This is confusing. Do you want to know why? Why? Because we've got the rule already set in place. Mm. We've got this new rule, and you're proposing a third. Oh, we now so have. Many I rules. think the third rule might be better. We now Ooh. have three. Arsene different Wenger, eat your heart out. Yeah, Arsene Wenger, on, I know you, you know you're a listener of the show, fan of the show. Mm. So come on, just change Arsene, something. Not Wenger out on the show. No, Wenger we're, in. We're Wenger in at the moment. I've got a spare seat next to me. I've got the big sign ready. I've got a seat next it. to me, Wenger oh, in. Arsene, that'd be great as an Arsenal fan. Big, <laughs> big, big man. Love him. Speaking of Arsenal, actually, just quickly. Oh, uh, let's not, please. Four 0 win. Yes. I think that's Finally. over Newcastle. Seriously, the one time I bet on them. I yeah. know. Well, I bet on them winning. So why would you bet? Did you bet I, against I, them I getting bet, a draw? No, yeah, I bet on them to draw. I mean, we've had them like 13 on. Drawn 13 times, and this is the one time they win 4-0. Like, well, okay. I mean, they Newcastle are short. Yeah, they are. So. They are They are pretty bad. They are. Um, Dross. But I was still expecting... I was expecting a closer game, mm. and disappointed me. Still Come on, Arsenal. Just draw. 13, What's going on? 13 draws. Some team, one They're team not in, artists. 
One team who hasn't drawn. <laughs> Thank you. One team. I'll be here all week. One mm-hmm. team who hasn't drawn thirteen times this season, let alone twice. <laughs> I'll stop it, you. You'll never walk alone, Gusman. Mm. Take that. Well, you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, I do. Okay, you didn't seem enthused. <laughs> not because I don't care. Not as enthused as I am. Do I you don't remember? Care about Liverpool. Way back when, I think it was. Um, I'm going to say episode 16, something mm-hmm. like that. Gussie had a one week segment mm. where oh, he yeah. was trying to basically predict things or bandwagon, bandwagon of, the week. of the week. It was. Oh, yeah, I remember and your that. bandwagon for the week was Leicester City because you thought they were going to go all the way. Oh, they the were chocolates. destined to I don't go think all the I, way. I think I think I might have said they'd give it a good shake. No. I, ne- I don't think I ever said they'd go. I I never said they'd go all the way. No. You'd have to pull that up and actually I remember play that back. But I, I don't want to go through the audio no. to do that. Yeah, I wouldn't either. <laughs> I wouldn't want to either. Um, but I, just, I don't think they'd go all the way. I knew. So he's changed his mind now, Campbell. I don't I remember, know. No, I, no, I didn't say it when I said it. So <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't say it when I said it. No, I didn't say it when. I didn't say when, when that segment. Okay. Okay. You know what it's, I mean? Um, no. Okay. It's just because I remember getting kind of nervous about Liverpool going. Uh, you know, I think at the time they were only about five, six, seven points clear. Mm. And for Liverpool, that's not enough. Even twenty-two points doesn't feel like enough. Oh, I miss mm. the days when you guys had finished like outside the top ten and stuff. <laughs> well, well, we're sitting at tenth, mate. Arsenal. So yeah. we're, we're we're on equal points with uh, the old Burnley. So we're doing fantastically. Just flying high. Flying high. Tenth. I remember actually a few years ago. How dare you compare yourself with the wicked Burnley? They're like I know Sean Dyche's man. That up Chris here. Wood. Chris Wood, the Kiwi. Would yeah. he? Would he get into Would the side? Would he score a goal? I don't know. There's a there's a there's something there. There's a headline there. There's an essence. Would he? Would anyway. He? Um, yeah, but still, uh, Liverpool destined to win it now. Big win over mm. Norwich. Well, not a big one. I think it was a 78th minute goal, Sadio Mane against Jeez. Norwich last and week. And they are dross as well. They are, exactly. But um, I guess if we change tactic a bit and go, you know, Liverpool, first first title in 30 years? Maybe not. Referencing what we spoke about er- earlier in the show, Manchester City. Mm. If they're stripped of their title, uh, yes. Liverpool, the Steven Gerrard slip might not mean anything. I'd hate this. I would too, actually. I think even Steven Gerrard would go, I'd rather not have one on my name that I didn't technically win than have one. Because the whole story is that basically they're considering doing a Melbourne Storm and stripping Man City that's of some a, of their titles. But that doesn't give second place the title. Well, that's what they Well, in the NRL it didn't, which I think is the right way to do it. Yeah. But there's been talk about it happening. I think it's oh, just from fans man. and journos in England going, Stevie G, mean Stevie G won one. Even because they like that as a story, but, but I think they, it shouldn't happen. No, it, that it definitely just be no shouldn't one happen. Won. They didn't deserve it. Look, they he, didn't win. He's quote. He's quoted. <laughs> yeah, who, exactly. cares, who cares if Man City cheated? I mean, you still got to. Yeah, but Gusman, you can't just claim it because. I agree. T- take a step back. Olympics again. We spoke about it earlier. Mm. The premier sporting event around the world. When a gold medalist gets stripped of their title for drug cheating, mm-hmm. what happens? Is there no gold medal winner? No, I no, know is. they are. The they are very different sports, though. Why? Well, what? Well, one's football and one's in running. Term, no, not that. Or not in swimming. Terms of, not in terms of gameplay. In terms of why should their award system be different, at least uh, on merit? Well, I think it's a shorter event, so it's not like you've worked the whole season to uh, to come second and then just go. Oh yeah, no, no, we're, we're first now because the other side. No, nah, they don't get their title because they cheated. I really don't think that's fair. Yeah, but um, it's the. It's also f- not fair to cheat either. It's not, but it, I mean, it's the same with you know decathlon athletes. It just and, doesn't make uh, sense that you go back ten years and go, yeah, you got this title. Oh, it I, means I it agree. means nothing as well. Do you reckon they do the parade? They get all the players <laughs> back and they do the whole parade and they go, oh god. No, I agree with you though. It shouldn't happen. So Stephen Jarrett, he's been quoted as saying he is very interested in the outcome of this, but again. I think he's going to go, look, if they give it to me, I'll take it. Denver bar. But do I necessarily... <laughs> <laughs> well... Uh, uh, <laughs> Nightmares. <laughs> Finn's not going to be able to do the rest of this podcast. He's crying in the corner uh, of the studio. White girl. <laughs> <laughs> should, I, should I bring back the door gag from episode two? Yeah, no. 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 I'm that- leaving. Yeah, that was shocking. But you did it If twice. you haven't listened to episode two, <laughs> go back and <laughs> listen Brin. to it. Bryn Narang. Uh, yeah. No, no. But again, it's quite interesting. The fallout of Manchester City at the moment is... Mm. You know, it could be me- mega. Yeah. Because the club could almost die, in a sense. You know, it could really, really drop. Can we have a mm. Saras situation? Saris, Melbourne Storm. Mm-hmm. Melbourne Storm, they're a different breed. I though. see I see mm. the Saracen sort of thing happening. You go, you start the season with minus 50 points or something. I'll still win. City would still 
<laughs> they they probably still finish above Arsenal, but <laughs> probably they definitely wouldn't get. I don't think they get relegated, even if they were fifty well, points behind. But again, mm. determine how many points they get deducted. So say they. Well, usually they get like seventy or seventy. That would be no, so, so six, many yes. to be. No, Gussie. No, you, oh yeah, no, they'd be relegated. They would sure. definitely be relegated because yeah. if they're deducted, I just realized <laughs> if they're deducted thirty points, and now the magical number in football for. No, be staying up, thirty. Yeah, it's forty. As mm. you as mm. you would know if you played football manager mm. in the prem, but you're just not that good of a no, manager. No, I'm in league CJ. two. Anyway, you'll get there one day. Um, Cheers, mate. So they would need to earn seventy points throughout a season, which is a just winning to stay campaign. Up. No, That's it's a, not a winning campaign. Well, it's up there. Liverpool are on seventy six at the <laughs> and moment, and every other side's on like forty and yeah, fifty. No, it's a good. It's definitely an excellent campaign. But yes, yeah, I but agree. <clears throat> sorry. Um, Jeez, mate, come on. I don't know what it is. Have a soother. I'm quite parched. Quite I think much. I need one. You're thirsty. You need a bottle of water. You're thirsty. Water, water man. No, water yeah. man. My thro- my <laughs> we need someone holding <laughs> the water. <laughs> we need a producer <laughs> standing in the corner with a bottle of water. <laughs> my throat. You want a, you want an Evian? My throat. Mel Franklin. It's square boys. <laughs> Drinks <laughs> Lift, okay? <laughs> <laughs> giving directions. Fire up here, Finn. Fire Axel up, producer. let's go. Come on. Big push in this final 10, boys. <laughs> hey, should we do a Mexican wave? Hey! <laughs> Pull the Gatorade on there. Yeah, hey, Gatorade. boys, come on. See, that was quite disappointing. We had a three-man yeah. Mexican wave right there. And, and the third only, leg didn't. Only went past it was just two, two. It's quite depressing when it's only two people in a Mexican wave. CJ, what do you reckon the record for most Mexican wave <laughs> laps in a radio studio is? I reckon we can make it. I reckon we can I make reckon it. There's, I think we just did make it. No, because... I don't well, think you can with uh, one person not doing it. Yeah, so how about you do it, Gussie? Oh, you know, You're not okay. a team player, mate. Sorry, I'm just not a big... You've got, a, you've got a, big, a Microsoft Word document up, I'm, I'm not and a we're big, all using a Google Doc. You are I'm not a, a team player, pal. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll follow up with uh, uh, the Guinness Book of World Records there. And see I think can, there's something there. That could actually be kind of funny. I I'm think there's something there. <laughs> just, just us st- sitting in the studio I'm, for nine hours going, going hey! <laughs> I know, I'm one of those Get people. like a beer cup snake going. <laughs> <laughs> I'm one of those people at sporting events that sees a Mexican wave going. And I deliberately sit it out. Are you kidding me? Yeah, I do. You are a loser. I, I go. You are I no go, fun, mate. No, I go. You are um, literally zero fun. I'm like, I'm like a oh, Mexican wave. Uh, I hope it stops. You know, blah blah. You're the worst. No, I'm not. You're I'm racist. Just, I'm a okay, normal. You're I'm a racist. Nor- are you a Trump fan? <laughs> <What>? <laughs> you're I'm racist. racist to Mexicans. Keep them out. Because I don't do the Mexican wave. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's you, political mate. correctness gone mad. Exactly. You are, mate. <laughs> you <laughs> are. Because we could just do that. Twenty four hours in the studio, breaking world records, breaking pointless Ooh. world records. It'd be Dude Perfect Part Two. No, but I'm talking about dumb things. Yeah, like, yeah. I don't, I don't super know. dumb things. How many time? Ta- how long you can stand on one? How point? long you can talk about Bulls Masters for? Oh, I God. wouldn't be able to sit there an hour of it. Oh, you couldn't beat me. I'd be yeah. going on. You'd, like, you've a, you're a seasoned pro, mate. Oh yeah, seasoned vet. Anyway, uh, just taking it back to the NRL nines to finish because we did cut Gussie off earlier. Yes. Uh, what did you want to talk about, Gussie? The offic- no, we spoke about the No, we did the NRL yeah. nines. I, I wanted no, to talk. Want to- you want to speak about the Your captain's challenge? I don't yeah, know yeah. what you... You skipped the boat you were, twice. You were trying to talk about something. What, trying what? to remember what it was. I think it was the ch- captain's challenges. So yeah. For the... Not NRL nights. For the upcoming mm. All-Star game this weekend. I think it's... I want to say Saturday. Yeah, I think it's, it's this Saturday weekend. At uh, Seabus Stadium on the Gold Coast. Yeah. Captain's challenges. Now, that's quite a... It's not a new thing. I don't think... I don't, I'm pretty I don't sure it's not. It, I think it's been talked about, but I don't know. I, I'm pretty sure it's a new thing. I vaguely remember... Like all star games, like yeah. way back when, 2012, 2011, well, when like each team had one or two challenges a half. Yeah. I could have imagined that because I mm. dream about league constantly, yeah. but. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, sure. the all yeah, stars the all stars so. games have sort of been seen as a, a trial for new rules and new sort of systems of playing S- the game. Similar to the NRL 9s. Similar. Well, no, they, they're definitely putting I mean, some different things similar through. Similar to the yeah. NRL. Yeah. Just a gimmick. No. Um, <laughs> okay, yeah. that 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 watch that yourself. Hit a bit too home. Watch yourself. No, too close to home. It's a, no. Watch it, yourself, fool. It is bizarre, but you were speaking earlier in the week off here about All Star Games. Full stop. Now we just had the NBA All Star Game, which, to be honest, I think was a success. We've had the Pro Bowl in the NFL late last year. You know, MLB they have All Star Games. You know, it's a constant thing. But you're not a fan of well, sports adopting different not, things from different sports. I don't think I said I wasn't a fan. I just. I don't personally watch it. I mean, maybe that's just because the league one's not as good. I don't watch it, but Wait, I'm what not. What was a f- that? I well, I I don't really. Let's w- play that back. <laughs> I don't think the league one's as good. They're making it better. It's basically the same. Because like- it used to be it used to be Indigenous All Stars against NRL oh, All Stars, no, and I, I thought that had 
that I thought that was pointless. They're doing a better job now doing Indigenous versus Maori All Stars because you got a Moldy. little bit, you got a lot, you got a lot more culture in there. Maori, and Maori. It makes it palmy. You want to um, let me finish? Not really. So basically, CJ, keep going, Angus. Yeah, I yeah, there's a lot more culture and a lot more um, uh, all all that sort of stuff uh, expressed in this game, and I think that makes more people want to watch it as well because it used to not really get much of a crowd. Um, I'm not sure about this weekend at Seabus. I don't know how many people will be there. It's just Seabus is just not a place you want to watch rugby league. It's just, it's a, especially coming down from Brisbane, it's such a hike. I think rugby, so, it's like the NRL hours. is almost leading the front in world sport almost when it comes to accepting uh, for... World games, pal. World games, yes. Yeah. Unlike football and pole dancing, exactly. of course. No, but they're leading world sport. I will use that term, mm -hmm. even though it's not technically correct. Mm-hmm. In that they are acknowledging and accepting indigenous culture and bringing them and making them a part of their sport, mm. a central part of their sport. Yep. Now there are NRL trials this weekend, but you almost wouldn't know. Mm -hmm. No. I think it's great. I think it's. Oh, this, are, this is. Yeah. Sorry, no. Continue. Do you want to let me speak? Do you want to let me finish? Me no, I just wanted to put a point in there, but you can. No, continue. I was just going to say. So basically, <laughs> what the NRL did really well last year, and they've done it again this year, is. Um, you know, remember or recognize where these athletes are from specifically. So I saw it on Facebook the other day, but they were going through the indigenous team and going, they're part of this country, as the Aboriginal people call it, in this part of, you know, New South Wales. Mm -hmm. You know, Turrible, Jagra, up yeah, here. Basically like highlighting it on a map. Yeah. And again, I think it's really, really cool. Channeling their culture, how they you know, their war dances, they'll mm -hmm. clash and that's just a highlight of the season. Yeah. I think. Well, I was going to say, you mentioned that it overshadows NRL trials. I think it also is overshadowing the World Club Challenge coming up as well, which is considered as the two best sides. So the the NRL premiers and the Super League premiers uh, taking on each other. There's, whoever wins that's supposed to be the best in the world. But this sort of, uh, this Maori and... Uh, and in, indigenous game sort of overshadowing that one as well. Yeah, I, I don't think anyone's going to be watching the game. I am. That other one, the one. Well, because you're Club. a Chooks fan. Yeah. No one else will be so watching you, it. You just had to mention it. Basically, it's a bit, it's a bit early for a lot of people because so, yeah. it's over it's in England. Six thirty, so, so five thirty our time, I think. Yes, Six thirty Sydney yeah. time. So I think the fact that the NRL has been so dominant in the World Club Challenge for so long, you know, there's no real need for teams to go, hey, let's let's watch it. Mm, exactly. Or play uh, fans. I mean, so. Again, this is closer to home. It's something different. Mm. So I think people like that. Yeah, mm. exactly, exactly. One thing we need to mention before we get out of here. Boys, who are our tips for the Women's T20 World Cup? Australia. I mentioned it earlier. Yeah. They, they're just quality all all over the park. I mean, Elise, uh, Elise Perry will be just... Mm. Um, she, she, I reckon she'll knock a couple of tons in this competition. Yeah. I reckon Golden she's that good. Wearer. Yeah. Mm. Um, she was outstanding in the WBBL as well. Mm. And... Um, I expect the same from her again. Yeah. I expect uh, the same. Nothing <laughs> short. Meg, Elise, Me Meg Lanning's probably Meg Lanning's up there with uh, uh, Perry as one of the best Australian yep. uh, uh, women uh, women players. Um, so yeah, look, I ex I expect Australia to go all the way. Probably take on India in the final, something like that. Mm. I don't know. Well, they are heavy favourites. I mean, they're a dollar sixty one to yeah. win and the uh, home, get the chocolates. You home soil are as well. Obsessed. Mate. Uh, I'm looking at an article here, mate. I'm not doing any more research. Yeah, uh, <laughs> exactly. England, uh, five dollars, and India, as you mentioned, are six dollars fifty. So yeah. England are actually ahead of them. So who's your tip, mate? Thailand at a five hundred and one dollars. Hey, five hundred and one. That's good money. Put yeah, exactly. They're a smoky. They're a smoky. If Leicester did it, no, it, so Thailand. It's it's <laughs> it's Australia's to lose. Yeah. And, uh, I'm gonna go with the uh, White Ferns just because they haven't won it since two thousand. So. And you're a Kiwi. And they're, yeah, 10 yeah, bucks. Yeah. they're 10 bucks to win. But they haven't won it since... That's not bad. It's not terrible. They haven't won it since 2000. So simply, without knowing you know, many of their players, I think they're due. I think... Do you reckon it's an advantage it's in Australia? I mean, New, uh, New Zealand and Australian conditions are quite different. Uh, if we're being honest, Australia's going to win it. I, yeah. I, yeah. May, uh, maybe England. Yeah. But I just can't see anyone competing with Australia strictly think, because yeah. they are so dominant even like abroad. Yeah, let right. alone when teams come and play on their... Oh yeah, you know, they'll dominate. They, they'll dominate fields and stuff. So anyway, that was another great episode, guys. Make sure you uh, check us out on social media: Facebook and Instagram at Beyond the Sidelines and at underscore Beyond the Sideline Sidelines on Instagram. Oh, underscore Beyond the Sidelines underscore. That's mm. the one. Can't forget about the underscore. Second mm -hmm. underscore. Anyway, and uh, make sure you check out our ETs as well. Now we've had some pretty pretty good ones. I don't want to boast too much, but mm. they've been okay. 
Not um, bad. Looking at the state of Australian rugby a few weeks ago, and uh, Campbell and I sat down and spoke about the national second division. How are you going to build it? What Australian football needs, CJ? They to need really it. Take Let's get tribal with it. Basically. I think that's basically the uh, sentiment of that piece. Um, share it around. Tell your friends. Live dangerously. You know how course. these things work. Yeah. We mention that every week. Every week. Anyway, have a great week, faithful.